Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to Chapa History today. Um, hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, today we have an awesome artist who I am seeing more and more of his work that impresses me, which I'm sure you do as well. Um, but one of the things I wanted to remind you guys, don't forget for Christmas, um, we have all of our apparel at Hot Leathers, so you can get anything Perowitz. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts. Um, there's a bunch of good stuff there. So go to hotleathers.com if you want any Christmas presents. Um, like, whoops, sorry. Also, well, here, we'll talk about this for a second. And um, I know uh, Daniel James still has a couple of my prints left. So, really? You still got some? Yeah, I think he yeah, has I like five. All... Yeah. Five left. So um, if any guys are looking for a unique Christmas present. Yeah, and these are uh, <coughs> uh, one of a kind, numbered, and once these five are gone, that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Perowitz underscore Psychofab. Um, <coughs> mine is Jody Perowitz. DP's is <coughs> D Perowitz. Um, you guys can go over to Instagram, give us a like. We post <coughs> as much as we can. Over there, um, we'll say hey to a couple of you guys, uh, Mike Draco, Jeremy, Doug Francie, good afternoon, <clears throat> Craig Ferry. Um, uh, Gary, Raphael, hey Gary. Yeah, hi Gary, and Anne, if you're watching too. Uh, look at the dude, uh, <laughs> Richard Young. <laughs> yeah, the dude, which, um, I guess <clears throat> the dude <clears throat> lives next door to Mike Parada's mom. Oh, really? Yeah, I randomly saw oh, Mike. Oh, no kidding. Um, yeah, um, Walt, nice seeing you. <clears throat> Uh, listen today, sunny Georgia. It's actually it's not su sunny here, although it looks kind of sunny out there now. But it's kind of dreary, but it's not cold. It's yeah, going to be in the fifties cool. here today. I think it's already. It was in the fifties when I got here. Yeah. Um, John Holloway from England. Uh, Mike Draco. Uh, Kevin Tyler Baxter. Hey, Kevin. Tyler Anthony, did you paint that? Um, if it was the picture that I just posted, no, that's what Steve Gibson painted. So, um, we'll get to that. Jeff Zeller. Snowy Wisconsin. Ooh, keep that there. Um, Dennis from Deerfield, Mass. Kevin Baxter, Tony Tello, Matt Roth. Hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt. How you doing? Yeah, Matt. When are you going to send us some um, deer jerky? We've been <laughs> waiting for it. Uh, Sam in Maine, 27 and snowing. Oh, boy. But Maine feeds off of snow, so yeah. they like it. Right, yeah. exactly. You can keep it up there. Um, well, you know, did you thank all our sponsors today? Um, yeah, so thank you to Indian Motorcycles, Law Tigers, and Badlands. Um, and NAMS. Yeah, which I actually just randomly today have my Indian sweatshirt on, not even on purpose. Um, okay. But you guys know that, all know that I love my Indian. I love my Challenger. <clears throat> if you guys haven't had a chance to test ride one, go do it. You'll like it. I guarantee it. Um, Law Tigers, if any guys are in the need for an attorney, give Law Tigers a call. If you got in a motorcycle accident, um, anything, give them a call. And Badlands, which is NAMS, as well as electric lighting. If you want bright lights, try uh, All electric. LEDs, wiring, harnesses. Um, pretty much Jeff at NAMS is making, uh, he's making all the harnesses of any kind from most everybody now. Uh, he's he's really got it going on as far as wiring and harnesses and lighting. So if you need any of that stuff, uh, NAMS, Badlands, and Electric Light, uh, they're the ones to go to. Yeah. Um, now, Steve from Air, Oil, and Lead. Yeah, let's... Um, Steve, uh, I have admired Steve's work for years. Uh, I see his stuff. He's had several bikes that he's painted in our paint shows, and his work is phenomenal. Um, you, you know, I know pretty much most of the artists around the country uh, that are doing really cool stuff. And, you know, everyone kind of has their thing, um, and and Steve's artwork is just like man yeah. it looks like pictures all right well know? um to answer that question real quick kevin baxter the pins yes those are all the roots those are all the rides that i've done so as you can see there's a lot of pins yeah, wait a minute. How's yeah. That? so there's <laughs> a background which is pretty much almost every show that is my map of what i have covered on a motorcycle 
on, on rides, runs, on rides, rides, on long rides. Yeah, I mean, I've done every state, but um, not necessarily on a ride. So those are the, the cannonballs, the chases, the ride to Sturgis. Um, the all West different. Coast ride. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let's 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 bring on Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hello. What's up, guys? How are you, Dave? Joe? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. I was super stoked. Um, yeah. So well, thank you. A, it's like an honor. This is killer. Give us some background. Background. Uh, born in Philly, but I'm Jersey Shore, born and bred, really. Um, I was thinking I saw you. So are you in Atlantic City? I'm right outside of Atlantic City. The uh, the shop I, I rent I rent space at a shop right across from a, a Harley dealership. Um, per, Purdy Automotive. I got to give them a shout out. They're 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 great. They they've given me a home for some years now. These great people here. But uh, it's about I'd say like a five to ten minute ride outside of Atlantic City. Oh, so um, I was right the park. I was in Ocean City at my aunt's last weekend. Wait, Ocean City, New Jersey. Yeah. I graduated Ocean City High School in 1994. I grew up in Ocean City. <laughs> oh, so what a small so, North End. Yeah, um, my partner and I. We actually have um, we have a, a t-shirt venue up on the summer on the boardwalk in the summertime. We just started like three or four years ago. Wonderland oh, Pier. Suck. Really? You have yeah. to so, because well, I go to my aunt's all the time. Oh, do you really? Yeah, yeah we're has, up there. Um, he has a beach house so, on the boardwalk in on um at 18th and Wesley. Okay. And then she she just bought a house in the bay. So she has a house. Oh, on no the way. Side. I grew up on the, in the North End, like North Street, actually. Like, oh, okay. A little bit, I know exactly. Little bit before so the same, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I went to like St. Augustine's Catholic School when it was still open on 14th <laughs> and Asbury. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, my, my folks relocated from Philadelphia down uh, when the casinos pretty much opened up in the early 80s. Um, and they, they wound up settling in Ocean City. So yeah, I pretty much grew up in Ocean City. Um, I'm like a surf rat, really. I grew up surfing and skating. There was, there was tons of kids surfing on Friday at like the end, the end of the boardwalk, the north end of yeah, the Yeah, on, on the north. Yeah, they're probably surfing at North Street, heading down toward Waverly Boulevard. But yeah, that was like, those are my stomping grounds growing up. Like it's, yeah, that's funny. But yeah, Ocean Small City. World. It is. Yeah, we actually world. went, we went up to, we were kind of bored. We went up to Ocean uh, Atlantic City. And I was like, this place. Dude, Atlantic it's, City's a, it's a hole. Like, I there's know. no way around it. I know, place, it is. It, yeah, it's no, uh, so much potential. Uh, you know what? It's That's what corruption does. That's that's yeah. all I'm going to say that in a, in a nutshell. Yeah, it's um, sad. But but it, it is sad. Anyway, but yeah, yeah Ocean so, City, how about that? That's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Small so world. Crazy. It's such a small world. Such yeah. a small world. But that's really fun. Yeah, we're up there a lot. I actually have my my nine year old was helping me most of last last summer up. We we opened up a, another little small shop at Castaway Cove too in the summer. So like he like runs the cash register and takes orders and stuff already. You know. It, it's neat, you know. Yeah. He passes to the amusement parks and stuff and teach him a little work ethic right out of the gate. Um, he probably yeah, loves great. it. Loves it too. Cause oh, it's he do. He's the cool kid with his, yeah. his friends walk up. They're all going on the rides and he's sitting there like hustling already in fourth grade. Like it's, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, we airbrush him up some stuff. So it's, it's neat. It's, it's, it, it'll make for some really rad memories when they get older for sure. So yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. how did you uh, start out? How'd you get into artwork? What, what's your, uh, what's your story? The background on is, always always doing it i mean from the time i can remember always drawing always had a pencil in my hand always had that creative creative bug um i don't come from a family of artists at all i'm like the black sheep there's no art in my family that that much um but what i figured what i figured over the years is i have a lot of people in my family who have a really good attention for detail with their various vocations so i feel like that's what i got from my family. It wasn't so much the creative part as, it much, as much as it was this attention for detail. Um, and just a very curious mind for that matter. So I've tried tons of media. I went to went to Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida. I don't know if you're familiar with St. Augustine, but great, great town. Bit, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I have a, I have a bachelor of arts degree in fine art. They, and it was, you know, it, art school is kind of the the myth there is that you learn a lot there and it's kind of the old hat. They were still teaching abstract expressionist kind of Jackson Pollock. Yeah. Kind of I stuff when I was in school, you either have art or you don't. I see. I don't know, man. I, I, 
I've been te- like I, I taught in an art center in my area here for about 14 years. Um, and I really feel like if you work really hard, I feel like some people definitely have uh, a, an easier time with it and come by it a little bit more naturally. But I've seen a lot of people work really hard um, and get really far with it. And I feel like it's that love and that drive and that passion to me will usurp natural talent any day. And yeah. that's, but I do feel like there are some of those people where you just look at their work and you go, it's so ungodly. Yeah, I mean, um, you can definitely fine tune art. I think that even like my stuff, I look at it from five years ago and it's way better now. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was. But there's people, I guess, maybe if you don't have the love for art, you won't pursue it. So, I mean, I feel like it's, yeah, I mean, I feel like you have to, you know, like you guys, you know, you're passionate about what you do, you know, and it's, you're not going to keep doing it. If, if it runs out, you know, and I feel like oh, yeah. you, you plateau and you, and you become stale. So you either, you know, you continue that love or, you know, to me, you just can, you know, I've always said, like, if you fall in love with the process, it'll never get old for you, yeah. regardless of what you do. Right. And I'm a very process oriented person. Um, so as long as I'm doing it, I'm exploring different ways to do things. And I'm, you know, my influences are all like oil painters. It's not airbrushing. It wasn't so much the custom culture. Um, you know, 50s, 60s, the, the, you know, the, the daddy Roths and, you know, even Craig Frazier and, and, you know, the, the birth of, you know, I would say real custom airbrushing, yeah. um, you know, 70, but like Rick Griffin, those kinds of influences from early surf culture, the old Grateful Dead albums and those illustrators yeah. were early influences for me. Um, but like, I kind of like wound up here. I, I always say like this, this kind of where I wound up picked me as much as I picked it in a lot of ways. And I feel like there's a lot of truth to just kind of following your gut and your intuition, regardless of what it looks like to other people. And I feel like I, I kind of landed in a place that I absolutely enjoy and love. Like I, I wasn't brought up in, in motorcycle culture, so to speak. I'm like I said, I'm, I'm a surf rat from the beach, but there's a lot of crossover, I think in, in that camaraderie and, you know, different people from different walks of life sharing a common passion, um, I find very relative to the scene that I'm in now. So, um, but yeah, the art thing, it was, it's all traditional. I worked for a mural company in Atlantic City in the 90s um, when, 90, when, when the, the casinos were still kind of bumping and grinded for the most part. There was a lot of work there. So I really, I cut my teeth with a lot of old sign painters who were losing their, um, their work to vinyl billboards. Um, so you had a lot of these guys with years and years of experience now painting murals. Um, and I got a chance to kind of apprentice at a company and, and take up work there for some years off and on. Um, and I've just been a really good learner. So I just kind of sat there, kept my mouth shut. And these guys were just like, absolutely like, like uh, just so giving of all of their time and their knowledge, if you were willing to take it, you know, and willing to learn. But it was a different day too. If you couldn't cut it, man, they let you know really quick. So it was, yeah not not like today i think everybody's a little bit softer today but back then it was you know if you couldn't hack it they showed you the door real quick it didn't matter how old you were and and the, the second you showed any sign the cockiness they put you in your place real quick but um yeah just i was you know a, a lot of a lot of light, life learning i think is kind of what got me to where i'm going but following but but the airbrush thing kind of always felt more natural to me than anything i did you know hand painted for some reason i don't know why I always said, you know, painting this way is weird because you never really touch the surface that you're working on. So that kind of feel and that touch goes right out the door, you know, in favor of air, really. But um, just following my gut, you know, that's kind of why the airbrush took over. But I I worked years in a body shop just trying to find my way or I always did whatever I had to do to kind of try to keep the art dream alive, so to speak. So my dad's a landscaper. My stepdad's a contractor. Um, There was always available work because there's... There's always a lack of responsible workers in those fields, I would say. Oh so, yeah, to say the least. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so do you do you primarily I, do airbrush stuff? That's pretty that? much. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at now. I mean, I kind of was doing everything from you know the body, you know, just the the regular body work and everything that would come in, just like the turn and burn kind of projects for years. Um, I did do piece work and and. Um, painting at a body shop, you know, just insurance jobs, panel jobs, that kind of stuff. I did that for years too, um, coming from a sign shop. And again, I really feel like it was just kind of a search for what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and honestly, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta earn, earn your way. So whatever I had to do, I think I, I would always take a job to kind of like, like, it, uh, 
I would say like informed me or, or kind of like educated me in the field that I wound up becoming. So like, you know, painting on a motorcycle tank, plain and simple. You know, yeah. I can fix a dent, I can pull a dent, I can, you know, fill it, prime it, take it all the way, you know, to, to buff and polish. And that's important to know the substrate and the surfaces you're working on. Yeah. You know, the, the functionality, I guess, of the art form that we're involved in. Um, yeah. But really, I mean, I, I worked at this potty shop for two years before I even told them I knew how to airbrush. So yeah. I just, I did my thing. And then like, eventually it calls you, you know, I feel like at times yeah. You, you, yeah. You, you try to find yourself and you suppress it sometimes and you go on like, there's no way I can make a living doing that or, um, but really I, I feel like the birth of my, my son really kind of, you know, lit a fire under my ass, so to speak, like pick a direction, get really good at it. Yeah. You can't be a yeah. starving artist anymore. Yeah. No, I can't. Yeah. It comes with a lot of responsibility and, you know, not for not, it's like, you want to do this, you better be really fucking good at it. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's yeah. oh, even yeah. when you're good at something, it's still hard. So, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. you're, you're lucky that, uh, you know, what I've found is there's a lot of good artists that that's <laughs> all they can do is airbrush. They can't yeah. prep, they can't paint, they can't clear the stuff. You know, they have to depend yeah. on other people to do all those other functions. And, yeah. you know, just being, even if you don't do it, you know how to do it. You know? Oh, and, I do. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Without that's, a doubt. that's a big you thing know, now. Yeah, now I have a great relationship with the body shop I'm working out of right now. So I, I work with the office and I work with the paint shop. And he's a painter I've known. He's 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 a fantastic painter. Um, Probably known him about 12 years now. So I've already got a good... And that's always part of the equation is finding somebody that you can oh, trust yeah. and who's dependable, yeah. good rapport. Um, But yeah, any given day, man, I'll pick up a sanding block and go to town too. Like, I mean, to me, it's like giant sculptures. Like, that's yeah. the creative part in me. It's no different. Um. And that's kind of what I love about, you know, what you guys do and, and you know, people in our circle, so to speak. I mean, the yeah. amount of talent and craftsmen out there, oh, it's yeah. neat to pull all of these different elements together at, at times to see what all those heads together can do and come up with. I mean, it really oh. is. It's such a unique art form. Let's yeah. let's get to some of your art. So you got that the, the painting that's behind you, which here yeah. it is. And I was overly impressed at this. Hang on, I'm gonna play the video. I think. Oh it, yeah, I got that video too. Yeah. Yeah. So that painting that's, that's right, right there on your on the picture, and as well as behind you. Yeah. I can't believe that that is not three dimensional. That is so. Cool. I know it. It is. I mean, look at this. That it's gone, are, right? It's oh almost God. gone. It's not quite done yet, but it's getting there. Yeah, it was supposed. It was supposed to be an auction piece. Um. Uh, through Sharon Williams sponsored. Uh, oh man, I should be shot for known. I know that uh, Elaine Larson, Larson Motorsports sponsors. I I believe they they contribute money to people's education. Um. And yeah, like shop work. You know, whether it's a. Uh, mechanical work or body shop i forget in the trade so to speak yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like they sp they sponsor that education for people every year so they get together and put together a bunch of a bunch of us artists and we put together these panels for auction and that's how they raise money and awareness yeah. and stuff and that's what this started i might have a hard time getting rid of this one I was yeah. just they, gonna say. they kept changing the deadline and i kept go adding to it like it was supposed to be a quick in and out job um and the way i, I usually approach my work is you know, I, I liken it to like, it's, it's not typical in the fact that if, you know, I tell people my approach doesn't change. If you want a $500 skull, I can, I can walk away at the hour amount and that skull will look finished and polished. But if you want that $5,000 skull, I just continue to add to it. So my strokes just get smaller and more fine tuned. Whereas on the, on the shorter end of it, they're a little bit more broad. And I would say the visual information um, does its job without adding too much detail. It becomes, a, you know, it becomes a good yeah, so, for yeah a good, uh, absolutely. A good example of that is this. So I saw this and I was like, "Wow, that is impressive!" And then I realized yeah. that it wasn't done. Um, no, that was like the halfway mark. Yeah. yeah, and then there it is done. But like, I'm impressed with this. But I could have walked away from that, and I think oh. it would have held up just fine. Right, you know, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, so yeah, definitely to, you know, then to go to this. It's like, wow. Yeah. Now, who did you do that for? Um, 
a man named Gary Irvin, who's based out of California. Um, he's a, a photographer. Um, he's, he's like a jack of all trades. He's a sculptor, photographer, huge motorhead fan. So he put together, I think it was a shovel. Um, 79, I think it was a shovel. This is about two years ago now, but he pulled together, you know, bike builder, uh, leather, yeah, the leather worker, metal worker. And I feel terrible because I can't remember everybody's name. Um, no, I right. pulled together all these craftsmen to put it together. And it really wound up being such a, a nice tribute to Motorhead and obviously Lemmy. Um, yeah, but was it wasn't overindulgent. Like it looked, it was still a daily rider. Like it's, and that's kind of where I'm at with like, you know, it needs, a, it needs the function. That's where my head goes with all of this. And like, I try to, you know, people will come to me and they'll be like, oh, airbrush everything up. And I'm going, no, like, give me a nice little, like contribute to the overall aesthetic of the vehicle. Don't like, yeah. I right. don't like this overall airbrush out everything. Yeah. It just, you know, that's a lot, that one, a lot, you know, the sides and the top. Usually I try to get, get the top and I love scallops traditionally on, I think on, on a, on a tank. That's usually my go-to. I know yours is flames, but mine's like the scallop, yeah. you know, yeah. your I flame mean, is my scallop. So this one have yeah. a rush. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, Man. Gosh. Yeah, that's an old one now. I guess it's 2015, that one, maybe 2016. So yeah. we're going back some years on that one too. Yeah. But so you put a lot of bike stuff. Um, I, I do. Um, generally, generally I'm getting things in the mail and I'll, I'll get work from other painters to just do their airbrushing and then I'll oh, send yeah, it back man. out. So, which is, which is really fun for me. Like I really, you know, I, the shop that I was renting, um, some years back, um, it was like, it was just like a, a one bay and I had a loft and, you know, I'm paying, I'm, you know, you, you're paying the overhead to bring it in. You know, you're doing all the, the jobs that just keep the doors open. And then I started realizing how I'm making all my money in a six, a six foot by six foot space is what people started coming, you know, coming to me for. So I, I really like, instead of trying to learn everything, I tried to learn like this really, 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 really good. Yeah. And then obviously social media it made like it a little bit easier to find <laughs> Uh, well, you know what, though? I, dude, I learned so much. I was talking to Jody about this before we went on. I took so much time during COVID and learned and fine-tuned so much stuff. Um, oh, I like think, like, you know, like things I just didn't have the time to get to. And yeah. it forced you to kind of slow down in that pace. Um, so I feel like I'm just getting warmed up, like, right yeah. now. I'm that's finally that's getting good. something. I'm yeah, so super great. excited. Yeah. yeah so so you just sent me, um, sent me this. So that is awesome i know yeah, that was a big one there's a panel there's five feet yeah. by four feet that was a commission a commission yeah, watch you so, do that you know uh, oh yeah yeah who did yeah, you I started that? that a week after covid hit like it so those like it, it got caught in the the homeschooling of the kids in covid grind that that yeah. one who did um, you do that for i don't know if i'm supposed to say so i'm just gonna uh. Oh, okay. Right, we'll leave it yeah. Yeah, no, oh. yeah. I don't want to get myself in trouble. So yeah. like, we'll ask Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about this um, one? This is like, right, so that, it looks like it's wrapped. Like that's. Yeah. Like, that's a um, homecoming Marine by Norman Rockwell. I think 1947 was the original painting. It's just a painting that I, uh, I don't know. It's always been endearing to me is, you know, and, and, and I'm, I've, I've never personally been in the military, but I've certainly had family. Um, but just just from a traditional artist and aesthetic point, it just, you know, here's a guy coming home from the war telling story, obviously post, you know, post-World War II. Um, it is just everything about that painting for some reason. It's one of my favorite works of art. Um, so this is actually an auction piece um, for the Good Ride, Carrie Hart's The Good Ride. I think that auction will be in January, but it, it, raises, it raises money for vets. I know that. Um, it's my second year doing it but like when i get these auction pieces or i get these these charitable things i always find the time to pick um a piece of artwork that i really enjoy and i want to explore a little bit um so like you know i'm a, a norman rockwell fan so like you know give me a chance to kind of walk in his steps a little bit and if you familiarize yourself i guess like with his process and his approach to painting in oil to try to emulate that with an airbrush and walk a similar a similar path with a different tool um it can be enlightening sometimes it can be frustrating sometimes but you learn a lot if you understand process so um that you know that's what that that is it's it's me having fun mostly but you know again going to a good a good cause too yeah so let me ask you yeah. what do you think yeah. um what point in your life 
did your art start becoming profitable uh, where people really took notice and you actually started making money? What do you think brought Man. that on? Or has it happened? What brought that on. <laughs> money. I, no, well, no, it is. It's, yeah, that's a good point, right? Yeah. Um, because even the guys that look like they're doing well aren't doing so well sometimes. That's, oh, that's right. the, the smoke and mirror show. That's for oh, sure. I, I, you see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. You know, they got a Rolex, but they're sleeping on their friend's couch. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> isn't, that know, true? Right? Um, isn't that true? Priorities. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm still wearing the same clothes I wore in high school, kind of. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you're lucky they still fit. <laughs> I know. You know I don't know about that. Uh, um, that's the surfer. So you keep active. Um, I would say profitable. Well, I feel like everybody goes through that hot and cold a little bit too. I mean, I can yeah. remember times in my early 20s where I had like a really good year and I was doing murals and I was, you know, I was spreading into a lot of different directions. Um, but I feel like it was not sustainable for the most part. And I feel like that's been the big battle. Um, for me, it was really, it, like I said, I think it was after the, the, the birth of my son. Um, and well, I feel like that's been social media. It, I mean, what made it aware? I stopped. How did the I public stopped. become aware with you? Locally, I started getting more work at the body shop for this airbrushing thing than I was making make it, yeah. you know, do. And at the, the shop, Dan's auto body, you got uh, Dan Rusco, super, super rad dude. Um, he let me use the, he let me, you know, use his facility before and after hours and on weekends um, to accommodate some of the airbrush work that started to come in. And, you know, as they say, once, you know, once you start making more money at your hobby than you do in your actual job, it's kind of time to take that leap a little bit. And that's, right. that's kind of what happened right. there. Right. Um, but again, at that time, it was, you know, you want true fire, you want this, you want that, you know, it was whatever would come down the pike, I would do. Right. And it would, you know, and it sustained me enough that it, I was still making more than what I was making at the at the body shop. Yeah. So you're working, I feel like you're working twice the amount of hours. Yeah. But, you know, which which devil do you want to feed, you know, working for the man or working for yourself? Because if you're going to work for yourself, it's going to be a lot more. But, you know, there's a pride in, in you know, there's a prideful thing there that you're, you're doing it. But um, I feel like I had to be okay with, with that is the direction I went with my art. And I feel like a lot of people, like I was, I was pretty good at murals, you know, I mean, above average, I would say um, my yeah, portrait was, work is very oh, yeah. good in traditional medium. Um, and I had friends that were, were finding some pretty good successes as I would say, gallery artists or fine artists. And I'm going, well, I, I'm almost at that skill set. I, I share some of the quality and, and you know, the, the, the craftsmanship that they share. Why aren't I finding success in the same field? And I feel like it was because I was pushing myself in a direction I shouldn't have been going. Okay. And I feel like, you know, yeah, call it a, a philosophical moment, whatever it is. I feel like when I got real quiet with myself and listened to my insides, it said, pick up the airbrush and paint on tanks. And that was it. It yeah. was that simple. Yeah. And I said, the change, the changing point for me was when I turned down like a $10,000 mural in, in, in part for a $1,200 airbrush job on a tank Yeah, because it didn't fit the program that I put in place for myself. And it was a scary moment because yeah. I, you know, yeah. I'd already oh, had my, I, my listen, boy. I can relate to that completely. Yeah. It, it's following your gut and trusting it yeah. when honestly it looks insane to do so at times. Um, yeah. yeah. You, you, you gotta, you gotta trust yourself. Gravity. Yeah, I mean, you know, a guy could come to me and and uh, and tell me he wants a seventy five thousand dollar bagger, uh, big wheel bagger build. I'm not even interested. I'd rather do a thirty thousand dollar bobber or an antique or an old bike. You know, I mean, that's what I love doing, and that's what I'm doing. You know, right? And same with you. You know, but one of the reasons that I was asking you that is, do you know Steve Leahy? Oh, I do. You know what? I met Steve Leahy for the first time um, at there's there's a workshop in, at Coast Airbrush in, in Anaheim. He was yeah. I, I taught at the last one in the spring and that was the first time I ever met Steve. We had spent we had sent like some pleasantries back and forth through Messenger and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but that was the first time I ever got to meet him and talk to him in person, I actually see his artwork in person. I'm like a total fan. Of yeah. him as a person too, not just yeah. his artwork. He's a good yeah. Guy. yeah. I mean Steve I is how tall he was. Steve is a good friend of ours. Oh, awesome. You know, 
And I mean, I've known Steve for a long, long time. Cool. And his artwork is phenomenal. It's yeah, incredible. Like, it's like he, on tiny little yeah, I mean, like his, razor blades. Yeah, his thing is doing murals on a razor blade. On a razor blade. Oh, I, that's how I first yeah. came across his artwork. Right. The, but but yeah. Steve struggles because he doesn't want to leave that medium, we'll just say. Sure. You know, um, my God, he could be doing motorcycle stuff. He could be doing all, but he is just stuck in that. But you know, that's his and, thing. and you know, that's I mean, and boy, I'll tell you, he's just, just such a great guy, <laughs> right? Like he chooses to be there, though. I think, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. His yeah. he's that's got his thing. thing. Yeah, but he's yeah, struggling. His you know, I mean, he's really struggling. Um, you know, and I know. I mean, I talk to some other like artist friends of mine that I mean, you know, when you see on social media or I hear about other people, you know, they have like a quarter million followers, and they they put on this show, you know you know, big, big, big number paintings and this and that, you know, and then you get the real story, which is they make most of their money on prints. It might take them seven years to sell that painting. Yeah. It might be through a gallery who's taken 50% of it. So do the math there for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. It took yeah. them four months to paint it. They took a 50% yeah. cut, it took them six yeah. years to sell it. They're famous, but they're broke. You know, yeah, right. like that's the thing is followers yeah. having, you know, a million followers doesn't mean anything. Nothing guarantees I mean, anything. Yeah. Th those followers. And like, I kind of think that about certain people, like, I'm sure. like, why does this person have, you know, three times as many followers as I do? And I know their work and I know what they do, but it's, it's what we said earlier, like smoke and mirrors, you know, yeah, and, and those followers aren't initially going to make you money. Yeah. If no, you are not good hearty base of followers that might buy your work or promote your work. That's better to me than having a hundred million followers. But quality over quantity every day, right. uh, you know, um, yeah. but, and, and too, you know, and I feel like the, the problem with the platform at times um, is that I remember the first SEMA show I went to, I, I was excited because I was finally going to get the opportunity to see some of the work that I'd been seeing online for years and, and this opportunity to meet some of these artists and, and I remember, you know, seeing some of this work in person and being like appalled a little bit. Like I'm going like, how many filters are they putting on their work? Because this yeah. in person is a totally different experience. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I feel like that's the difference in seeing like a really famous painting in an art book and then actually seeing it in a museum. It's a totally different ball game. Yeah. Like I always call it an, an experience. Like, oh yeah, yeah. So, motorcycles you know, are the same. Yeah. Like, oh, exactly. We right. were talking about that. In person, and you're like, holy cow, this thing's a piece of junk. It is. Or it just mind blow. Like to me, it's the ones yeah. you see in person that are yeah. better in person. It's like a yeah, good decision, yeah. right? Like you listen yeah. to the record and you see them in yeah. person and you're going, oh, they yeah. sound yeah. like shit. Yeah. Or you or they blow it away, you know? Yeah. Now do you That's go like, to any do you go to any motorcycle events? I haven't in some time, to be honest with you. Um yeah. I feel like as my I feel like is like I started gaining some momentum and some steam. Um my kids were born. I was kind of transitioning through a marriage at that at that point too. So I feel like a lot of things weren't lining up for me to really do do some events, um, and I'm still struggling to kind of find that time and kind of find the equation that works best for me right now, as far as that goes. And it's not for naught, man. I, I'd love to go to every single event because I'm definitely an experience oriented person and not one to sit on the sidelines. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you know, in, in due time, you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, I'm working on it. But. Well, you know, uh, um. What's really cool about what we do is uh, paint shows. You know, yeah. we're doing paint shows at uh, most of the major events. Yeah. And, man, you get a firsthand look at all the cool paint paintwork that you see in magazines and on, on the Internet. Yeah. And you really get to uh, examine it. You know, yeah. you get to really look it over. Um we don't judge the paint jobs ourselves. We always have a panel of guys like yourself right. come to the events. And it's really cool because yeah. they can be critical and they can spot things. One guy will spot things I don't see. I'll spot things they don't see. And it's it's really great because it's all a learning process. Oh, it is. There's such, yeah. there's such a communion in all of that. And I, right. feel like that, I feel like people lose sight of that at times in favor. Lost you for a second. Yeah. yeah. No, you're, you're there. Back. You're good. Ah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 
There oh. you go. Did I lose you? Yeah, but that's what, no, we got you. Hold on. No. We hear you. No. No. Oh, device disconnected. Oh. Um, well, let's we'll see if he comes back, but we'll go over here to some of these comments. Um, Flea's watching. Hey, Flea. Hey, Flea. Um, Dave O. Hey, Dave O. Dave. Dave uh, Nall. Oh, yeah, Dave Nall. Hey, Dave. Hope, hey, guys. Hope all is well. Yeah. Um, Jim Kelly, tell your guests he has a new fan. That's cool. Yeah, Pedro the Engraver. Um, so I noticed, I think Pedro the Engraver just started following me on Instagram. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and I went and followed him. He, he does some really cool stuff. Where, Where is Pedro from? Do you know? I, I think he was from California. Comment on here, Pedro. Yeah, let's see where you're from. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you just started following me on Instagram. I saw like yeah. a couple days ago and um, did some really cool stuff. We have to keep that in mind for if we're looking for engraving. Um, all right, let's get him back on you. Okay. Hi, are you there? Can you Am I hear there us? now? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? No. You can't hear us. I wonder why. What happened? Sorry. It's okay. Can you hear us now? No. Let me try putting you back down. Bring you back up. Now. Can you no? hear us? <laughs> no. We can hear you. Yes. Oh, try um going out and coming back. I'm going to re remove him and then kick him out and see if he comes back. All right, we'll see if he comes back on. Um, Oh, Pedro says he's in Washington State. Oh, really? He was asleep. Okay. Um, yeah, you did some, you do some really cool, cool engraving. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Larry said, dropping, uh, dropping my Indian off at some... Paint work we'd like to talk about in two weeks. Okay, cool. Just bring it in, Larry. We can talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. I mean, I wish Steve would will come back. Let me try try texting him and tell him to try it again. Uh, Anyways, um, I, we were talking about Steve. Like Steve is a great guy, and I'm really glad that he's teaching because he's a great teacher. Um, if you're listening, Steve, you just do phenomenal stuff. Oh, I guess we just hang on. We just... There we go. Okay. Back on. Um, let, I just wanted to show you, too, some more of um, Steve Gibson's work. He has a cool tank. Um, oh, boy, that's an old one. Yeah. Uh, Frank Franzetta. We used to do a lot of Franzetta stuff back in the day. Yeah, this uh, one. That was a very popular mural. I wish this I could one make this too. one bigger. Yeah, that's a Sorry, Franzetta, too. So small. Yeah. A little peanut tank. Yeah. Um, you guys saw the Norman Rockwell one. Yeah. Which that's an odd tank. It is. Um, I wonder what that was for. I don't know. Um, hold on, he says hear you try again. Right. Oh, he's back. Oh, all right. Let's see. Uh whoops, hold on. Let me take this off. Let me add Got Can you hear it. us now? I'm good. I could ah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. And that's all right. I know. Shit happens, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Every day. Technology. Sometimes it's it good, does. sometimes it's bad. I know. I we forget what this is, you know, compared to even 20 years ago. So, yeah, so yeah. I was just showing um these one, this this one. Yeah. And then this one. An old Franzetta, huh? Yeah, the old, the old Frank Frazetta. Yeah, I actually have a little something going with them. We're hoping to debut some stuff with um, Frazetta Girls. It's part of the Frank Frazetta estate. Um, we've been working in collaboration on some stuff that we were we were shooting to get out this Christmas, but you can look forward to it in the spring, some limited edition kind of art tanks and stuff. So we're still working out the details, um, but really, really neat kind of collaborative effort between me and them, um, yeah. which is cool. You know, it's yeah, very like, cool. Like, you feel like you're doing something cool when somebody kind of, uh, you know, uh, allows you to kind of take on that kind of artwork. Like you have to at least, you know, do it, do a prop, you know, do a proper, do a proper like yeah. diligence like, or, you know, for, yeah. for that artwork, whatever. They're, they're trusting me with, with a legacy in a way. And, I, and it's really, really neat, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Um, we were doing a lot of friends at a murals. Yeah, that's a yep. lot of them. And um, I just bought like two weeks ago, I just bought an old school chopper that has been sitting in a garage since the mid 80s that we painted. Uh, 
really? prior to that. And, I wish I had a picture. Yeah, on it. and it had uh, and it had a Franzetta, one of the one of the early Franzetta. Sure. And it still looks good. Yeah. No way. It was yeah. one of yours from like from years back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at that time, a guy named Roy Mason, okay, was working with me, and he did the mural, and okay. uh, Roy was an amazing artist. Um, we worked together for probably a good ten years, and you know, one of the most amazing things I got to tell you this. I, I've told yeah. so many people, um, you know. I'm impressed all the time by stuff like what you do and everything. But let me tell you, this Roy did something that I will never forget. We were working on this rigid frame uh, pan chopper, and the rear fender came down below the frame, and it had a chrome oil tank. And this guy wanted on the fender, on the bottom portion of the fender, he wanted um, uh, meet you. Uh, no, hotel time, written in script, in reverse. So that the reflection So it on reflected the into the oil, oil tank. tank. Roy took the brush in script and wrote motel time just like that, in reverse. Just, just like that. Yeah, I mean, Not, that nothing. like blew me away. Wow, just like... And you know what's even it, crazier? That bike, that bike was done in the 80s sometime. That bike came back to me about two years ago. A guy in Jersey bought it and sent it up to me to repair some of the paint on it. No kidding. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. How about that? So yeah. That's crazy. The stuff right there, isn't it? That's yeah. good. There. Yeah, it's just so good with the brush. Oh, just, man, that's uh, you're operating on a whole different level once you start doing stuff like that. But I always like the guys who do it so nonchalantly, like they've been there a million times. Oh, yeah. Sitting there going what like you know that's like um watching a good pianist does it for me somebody who can sit there and play a piano like it's going out of style yeah. blows my mind every time yeah but anybody who's a master of their craft when you see them in their element it's such a it's it's such oh, a it is. I, I you know no matter what it is i love watching it's a master at his craft it is it's it's wonderful you know it's it's it it's something else um, yeah now do you know you know who keith hansen is Keith Hansen, maybe not. Maybe Keith I don't know. Is, um, I work with Keith. Okay. Keith and I have been working together for twenty-five plus years. Okay. And um, Keith is—he's a phenomenal artist, also, and and he can, you know, uh, we have the best rapport that you could have. I mean, we've been working together for twenty-five plus years, and we've never even had a slight argument. I oh, mean. That's funny. It, it's we just work together and I was at his shop last night and he was doing uh, a mural on a Christmas bulb. Oh. And I mean, it was like, holy shit. I says, has Steve Leahy been here? And he was kind of like looking at me like, uh, really? You know, and I was like, no, no, you know. What was he just you just using like one shot and brushing? Oh, like, no, airbrushing. He's airbrushing it. Oh, he was airbrushing the whole thing. So what was he airbrushing on? It? I'm, and I'm the sure portrait. He was I'll airbrushing know. a portrait of a dog. Oh. On the Christmas ball? Yeah. I know what I'm doing later. Just to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How I'm many Christmas I'm balls balls yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fun, though. That, that's the good stuff you know, right there. It, it's so cool to meet all the people in the industry that are in our yeah Black world you know so to speak you know and and uh you know, like i say our paint shows have been such a medium for that where we yeah because i feel like uh kyle morley did some awards for you some years back oh, yeah. Yeah. Kyle, yeah kyle's so, done a couple of them yeah you know, so we'd love to have about, you do one sometime oh dude let me know I'll you know i mean daytona daytona and sturgis are our biggest shows and i mean we have the very best of the best you know, right. in Daytona and in Sturgis at our shows. And yep. I mean, it's like, wow, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I remember. Yeah. Cause Kyle lives about 45 minutes. Actually, I think one of our collaboration projects, I think we did a, a blue bagger from Curly's. Yeah. Years ago. I feel oh, like that. Yeah. It was yeah, blue I, and white, like wasn't a lot of, it? yeah. A lot of Viking themed kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 That was, that was Kyle and I years ago. Yeah. Um, the white one. Yeah. I was. Blue oh yeah. That, that white one. one. There was a white bagger. 
yeah. that, that you did that won a paint show in um, Galveston two, three years ago. Okay. Because it was, it was kind of a plain paint job. Yes. And it had like real subtle murals on it that were phenomenal. Yeah. Yep. Was that know. the one from Misfit? I think it may have been. Did you I do one know. from? Um, I, I I feel like like Kyle get those those jobs. He was doing a lot of work for Misfit. I think maybe three or four years ago. Yeah. And then he would bring me in on them. So like you know, I don't like half the time I didn't know where the motorcycles were coming from as yeah. much as like what are we doing? I would get all jazzed about with the idea. And right. Kyle and I, fun man. Like the collaborations that we we do and we still do. It's like man, we just we come in and we both have different ideas. And it's always like this, and but we're like we're very familiar with the way our creative process works. And then yeah. when we come fitting out the other end, man, we're always like, man, we got here together. And it's that's the part that I love about, you know, a motorcycle, plain and simple. I mean, to me, it's nothing short of a piece of artwork. But when you get all of these <laughs> personalities and expertises together, all looking for that common element of of you know, one one object, one piece of artwork. I mean, for that to work, everybody's got to kind of give and take a little bit. Um, and usually, you know, <laughs> the people that check that ego at the door, man, the results are usually unlike anything else. And yeah. and then it's functional. You can run down the road. Like, yeah. that's why I always, like, called, like, the, you know, I always say <laughs> my thing is. Like, I want it to be gallery quality, but I want it to be able to fly down the road, you know? Yeah. Oh, um, well, yeah. It's being so. on the same wavelength. It is. It absolutely yeah. is. And and that's where you learn. I mean, to me, those are the biggest learning experiences. Those are the the, the times you broaden your horizons more so than any other way. I mean, yeah. and you're really put to the fire a little bit. You know, <clears throat> there's a, a time restraint. Everybody's kind of dependent on each other to do their job. So, you know, there's no time for bullshit usually in moments like that. Oh, know? yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I have this one of the video that you sent me. Let's let's play this because I actually haven't seen it. Oh, oh, that's that Lemmy bike, isn't it? Yeah, I keep painting pictures of the bike I painted. It's kind of becoming a thing. Like, <laughs> that's cool. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, that was a, the Sissy Bar art show. Um, <coughs> so, is that, so that's like in a Sissy Bar? Is yeah. That... Um, oh, what's his name? He just had a feature in Chop called Motorcycle Art Extravaganza. Is um, Oh, <coughs> uh, what's his name? And he's like, like the... Was it my art extravaganza? Oh no, that's um. It was it was his first time out of the gate doing it, and he just he just displayed it on um, Fuel Cleveland also. Fuel in Cleveland. Um, dude, he's gonna shoot me for not. Uh, hold on, uh, I have to, give me a second. One second. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the paintings. Here. I think his hashtag's eight twelve ink. I think. Um, eight twelve ink. Yeah. Wow. What is his Sounds name? Sounds familiar. Yeah, but he made, he made sissy bars and he put together a sissy bar art show that debuted at Cheap Thrills um, end of September. Uh, yeah, I think but, Ken had. Um, do you know Mad Stork? I know. Ken, yeah, I know who no. you're talking. About. Don't know. Yeah, him, so yeah. he did a license plate thing, I think, for that. Yeah, right. That was, uh, yeah, it was a yeah. really yeah. 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 All of these, all of these sissy bars with just a piece of sheet metal welded in, in the in the negative space there. And he just said, everybody go at it. And it's, man, I think there was like 30 different pieces or something. And it was like literally 30 different pieces of artwork that couldn't have been more different. It was pretty, it was as a collective, pretty wild, man. Yeah, yeah. it's a neat I think, idea. I think Paul Cox did one, didn't he? Paul Cox did one. He had like yeah. a braid, but like it kind of seemed like a, almost red of like a Norse motif a, a little bit. It was like yeah. a, a braid, but yeah, he, he had one in there. Um but yeah, I, I, you know, and I like, I think as an artist where I struggle most is, is what to paint, you know, if you have a skill set, it's like, what do you do with that skill set? I can only imagine if you're a good writer with no story. That's how yeah, I feel. Right. Mind. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah, exactly. Start with what you know. So like, you know, I just painted this bike and there's, he's a photographer, so he's got really cool photos. So I just grabbing bits and pieces of a bike I painted and exploring it in a more abstract way, I guess you could say. And yeah. That's what I've been painting lately is like painting things I've painted and that's become my subject matter of late, which I where think. Did you, where did you get the idea for the one behind you for this? 
that I was supposed to just be a quick, a quick one. It's based off of a photograph from from my friend Gary Urban, who is actually the bike owner, also. Oh, okay. So when he 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 shot it under, you know, he shot it in the woods. He shot it in front of. This is actually, you know, the the shallow depth of field here, but it's actually the the wall behind. It's a graffiti mural somewhere. I think somewhere in Southern California. I think he's from the Santa Cruz area. So is this uh, a sissy bar? Yeah, that's the the sissy bar that the guy paint. Yeah, that's the sissy bar that was on that bike. That's oh, pretty wow. cool because I wasn't sure if it was like a knocker oh, on a okay. gate or a dual it's not like, beat that way, right? It's got like yeah, yeah, yeah right. literally like exactly. I, and, and because it looks so three dimensional, yeah, it's like you want to touch it. You but know, yeah. I saw I saw that when you posted that, and I mean, I I had no idea that it was a painting. I thought you were airbrushing on like a sculpture or something. Yeah, that's why I kind of posted that picture because I guess I was reading, and I don't like respond to a lot of comments and stuff like that. Right. Normally. Like normally I call it like post and go. Like I post it and yeah. I know it's <laughs> right. out there today. And I feel like you can't get anything done if you're engaging like social media all day. Like I don't. Well, yeah. You can't. Yeah. It, it would it eat just, up all your time. It could eat up every day, all day long. So yeah, like I kept reading the same comments. I was just like, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I thought uh, the same thing, and when I saw that video, I was like, "Holy cow! It really is flat." Like, because you, yeah, it it you so three dimensional, which is funny, you know. It's not. It is what it is. But I feel like it's like anything else. You know, people are like, you know, but airbrushing is weird. Like with some airbrushers, they have different techniques for different textures and different things. And I come from the like, see the whole thing is the same. Don't change your approach you know, dial in your approach to kind of fit the subject matter. And I feel like that's where you develop your own style and your own vision of the world around you. So, yeah. I mean, it might look like a photo, but to me, I painted those, those Frazetta tanks in the same exact fashion with the same, same exact approach. I don't change how I do something, you know, I just change the way I, I put my, my art mark down really. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> and I, that's the, the beauty of art that gets lost sometimes when you get somebody like, I want true fire or I want, a skull or they hand you a picture that they want exactly that way, you know, like to me, to bring a, a higher art form to that, they got to give you that allowance to kind of, to, to, to do your thing to it, so to speak. Like the way I see a skull is going to be different than the way you see a skull, Jody. Like yeah, you're right. I want to work through my eyes and I want to, I want to, I want to explain that experience to you through my art form. I mean, it's, you know, it's a form of communication in its most primitive sense. And I, I hate the redundant, just copy what you see kind of approach that you see a lot of, a lot of artists get lost in, you know, yeah, you gotta make it your own. Yeah, you do. And that comes with time and that comes with patience and that, that, that comes with slowing down ever so much to kind of notice the things that other people don't, because you'll find that you have an affinity to certain things that, that the guy next to you doesn't. And that kind of becomes your calling card and the way you see the world a little bit like, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a particular color red in the leaf every fall that I absolutely love. And that finds its way, that color finds its way into my artwork, you know? Yeah. So it's how I'm understanding the world and experiencing the world around me. It's going to come out if you allow it to, you know? Yeah. Right, right. So do you ever get in trouble, um, you know, when somebody brings you a picture and said, yeah, this is what I want, and you put your touches on it because you know you can do a nicer job, you can do a better job than this picture. Right. You yourself in trouble? No, not so much. Well, you know, that's that's kind of a funny thing. You know, um, I I very seldom ever, uh, you know, I, I want to. All you got to do is give me a direction. That's all I need. I it's, need it's a yeah. direction. Yeah. Okay. And I will take it from there. Well, I had a guy not that long ago. Um, he brought me uh, a job and uh, he brought me two pictures a picture of a skull and a picture of some flames. And he wanted that combination. And so I did it the way I would do it, which, you know, looked great. Better. And man, the guy like freaked out, you know? I mean, he, he was cool. Right. But there's no way he was taking it. Really? I mean, he's like, this isn't what I wanted. He says, I gave you the picture. I wanted it exactly like the picture. And, and, you know, I said, okay. And I just redid the whole job and I did it exactly like the picture. And, you know, he was happy, but you know, that never, that's the I, first I, time I, that's happened to me in 25 years. I had you know? a 
vacation a month ago that's along the same lines, and let's say I didn't paint the picture. Let's yeah. put it that. So the guy came, and again, it's always I need it yesterday. It's the same, yeah. same, same oh, conversation, yeah. different person. Yeah. You know, and he, he presented me with this rendering, and it was kind of had it had elements of like an old rat think, an old cartoon, so to speak. Yeah. And I'm going, all right. And I'm looking at it and it was shoddy at best. And he goes, yeah. I want this on here. And then he gave me all these extra elements that he wanted on it. So I rendered him up a drawing and I got back to him. And again, you know, I didn't take any, any deposit for design time. I didn't, you know, and I gave him what he wanted. And then he was, he kind of like shit on it. And he said, you know, I'm like, well, you gave me all, you gave me a list. That list is in this picture. And he's like, well, I want it more like this. And I said, I'm not doing it. And he goes, well, isn't this how it works? I give you something and you do it. I said, the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I, here, I said, here's exactly. the whole that we're not wasting, wasting each other's time. And I said, at the end of the day, my name's going on this one way or another. Yeah. yeah. On something that I, I wouldn't want to own myself. And I said, what well, you're asking me to do, I wouldn't hang on my wall. I wouldn't even let, you know, I wouldn't even put my enemy's name on this. Like, so no, maybe I'm not the artist for you. And I said, nothing hard, no hard feelings. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I'm not the guy. Your, your, your job here because if I were to do this the way you want it you're gonna hate it I can tell you that right now because I've had this conversation many times over yeah I yeah. said you're just a different name to me yeah uh, I said you either you give me that that allowance I said I'm 20 years in at this point yeah you know right. give me that allowance I'm in a position where I can kind of say I know what's you're coming to you know they come to us for our expertise yeah right, right. live eat and shit this stuff this is your one-time project this year, and it might be the one-time project for your entire life. Like, you know, I've, I, I, I've turned over everything you're bringing to the table. Like, I'm saving you money. I'm saving you time. Like, do you want to respect that? Because it is my time, ultimately. I don't right. want to do it, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, it's not going to work out. I'm, I'm out the door before I even start. No yeah. feel. And I, I'll give you a list of people to check out, you know? Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. No, I... I but I have said it. I said it to him too. I said, you know, like it's it's my experience that the customer's rarely right. You know, at the end of the day, you yeah. know, it's I don't want you to spend a thousand bucks on something you don't like. Like, yeah, yeah right. something that you don't want to sign. No, you know, or I know you're not going to like it once you see it. Yeah, this big. You're looking at it this big. Yeah, you know, all oh, this yeah. effort goes into into the fabrication of something. And you're gonna you're gonna putz out here on the 99 yard. You know, you just drove 99 yards, and you're gonna take a shit on the one. Like, don't don't do it. Like, but, and again, that's that's the way I conduct it. Like, I just you know, that might be right, that might be wrong, but it it separates the people out real real quick. You know. Yeah. Um, Steve, tell people how they can find you or follow you. Um, give yourself a, a plug for all of our. I know a um, bunch of people commented and said you have some new fans. Oh, very cool. Well, thanks. Um, air, oil, and lead. There's an underscore in between each word. Um, if you were following me last year, I got my account hacked. So I had to start a new account this year. Um, oh. So there's that. And I'm pretty much air, oil, and lead on Facebook. Air, oil, and lead .com. It's been the same thing. And the people that, and people ask me about that. So it's airbrush. The oil is for oil paint. And the lead was for, for pencil. That's where those three words came from. Oh. Huh. I was just that, gonna let, I didn't yeah, think of right, a lead I know pencil. it. I didn't either. Yeah, I, it just sounded better than graphite, even though I know like there's no lead in a pencil, really. But like, that's just gonna say. Yeah, it's uh, and that goes back years and years. You know, well over a decade ago, when I was searching for an identity, I was like, well, these are the three mediums I work in all the time: air, oil, and lead. So I'm like, let me just run with that. So that's that's where that came from. Okay, cool. Very so cool. yeah, so um any of you guys I'm actually uploading your Instagram right now uh -huh. if it goes. Um so there it is. If you guys want to follow him on Instagram, go give him a follow, air underscore oil and and underscore lead. Um and also same on, on Facebook, right? Yep, same thing. Okay. Yep. All right, Beautiful. awesome. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for, for coming on with us. Thank you. I such such an honor, really. Uh, you guys, you know, you're you're a legend. Yeah, I mean, it's been great. We've had a great, you know, this was a, a great conversation, and uh, and we will definitely um, talk again soon. Awesome, Dave. Yeah, really, I appreciate it. Um, and if we don't catch up, you guys have a good Christmas and a good holiday and everything like that too. 
Thank and, you. Uh, you too. Too. Yeah, and Jody, I will tell you where I'm at up on the boardwalk. That would be such a, that would be Oh, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Let me know where, yeah, because yeah. I yeah. go down there a lot. So do you, make, yeah, do you make it down during like summer and stuff like that? And spring? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. We yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm down there probably at least five or six times a year. Oh, okay. Super fun. Cool. Yeah. So I'll probably, I'll probably be back down like January ish. Okay. Very cool. Awesome. So yeah. yeah a message definitely It'll okay be cool. all right all right thank you very much for coming thank on the show. let us know if you want to be a part of our paint shows oh well yeah i'll definitely talk to you guys after, after yeah. okay the, i would love to get involved it, it would be an honor and a privilege for sure so cool. all right it. all right thanks steve, all right. Thanks, steve. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day you too all right guys so that was our show today that was uh steve gibson from air oil and lead um make sure you guys go and give him a follow on instagram his work as you could see is just phenomenal i mean it is so awesome it's so detailed um we've both seen it in person and it is just as impressive in person as it is online um so there's his instagram go over and give him a follow um and we want to give a shout out to india motorcycles La Tigers and Badlands, thank you guys for sponsoring Choppa History so we can keep bringing you guys guests. Um, next week, we are going to have two guests that are pretty cool guys. They're some of my friends from the Cannonball um, that I think you guys will really like to see. Um, and then the following week, we also, we're actually ahead of schedule. We're, yeah. we're ahead of our game this time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we're usually last minute as yeah. Steve knows, Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, but it's what we do. We always yeah. come through in the end. Right. right. Um, but we actually have guests lined up for the next three weeks. So, um, make sure you guys tune in and share our posts, um, share these videos, tell your friends to tune in and watch. If you can't watch live, come back and watch it after, um, so that we can keep doing this, so we can keep Choppa history going and bringing all this stuff to you guys so that we can build the motorcycle world. Um, and also, I want to give a shout out to everybody that has helped me and, and donated to the All Kids Bike um, Fund. So I got um, another set of bikes into a local school, which is Bridgewater, um, where DP lives, where I grew up. Um, and D and I brought those spikes to the school on Monday and it was so cool to see those faces, um, on these little kindergartners when they found out they were going to learn how to ride bicycles. Um, so it's a great program. It's the all kids bike program in which I'll, um, post a link to it. If any of you guys want to donate or what, or anything, um, I got another school, uh, New Bedford, which is another local school that I got bikes coming for and i'm looking for a fourth school in this area so um thank you guys to anybody that donated the hamsters everybody that helped out with the all kids bike program um i think that's it you got anything else no i think we're add? good and uh we'll just uh see everybody next week yeah we'll see you guys next week thanks for tuning in Bye bye